quality product. I think that we can contribute to growth to Summer League because we had a quality product and the, the reality was we were conscientious about making it better. And each year we tried to add a new wrinkle. We never, we never uh, rested on our laurels, always freshened it up, whether it be on the court, the, the floors. We brought in uh, dedicated floors, which were a huge hit. We brought in our quality referees and the training camp that they have going on simultaneously. So the quality of refereeing went, officiating went up. And then teams started believing like, wow, our players obviously are getting better. Uh, we went from 18 to 24 teams. And then, so teams looked at it as a huge evaluation opportunity. Um, markets all over the world looked at it as an evaluation opportunity because they now had a chance to scout all of the best players who weren't in the league, in the NBA, all in one place, which that's very difficult to do on a global scale. And that's what we provided. So that became a, a very, very big part. And then just growing it um, as, as our fan experience became better, we started incorporating in the autograph sessions daily and the meet and greets with different people and a couple of our tip off and welcoming events, uh, you know, our fundraisers, things like that. So people, it became more of a festival. The, the games became more NBA like an experience and we were able to keep prices really, really affordable. And you could come. Is, uh, what's, what's the price? Uh, what was the price in 13? And $20. And that was for all day long? All day long, $20. Then How we many went. Games did you see? Uh, at that time, you could see, I believe, six games a day, and then we went to eight games. Now we're at up to 10 games a day for a face value of 35 bucks for an adult. Yeah. So, the, uh, uh, what, so you started at about 5,000 attendance for the first year? Oh, no, we had 1,600. 1,600? Through the whole time, and yeah. Then, and 10 years later, 130,000. Well, not 15 years later, but the, before you NBA TV came, before you really, the NBA really embraced the media part of it. Yeah, before ESPN jumped in, which was, we're in 18 now, they came in in 16. Uh, before that, we had seen incremental growth, you know, between 15 to 20 percent of, of our spectators, people in the house. Obviously, we have the whole NBA economy, so a lot of credentials and a lot of people that are that are part of it, but that's headcount, right? Those are people through the door that we're helping each and every day. Um, but we saw that growth kind of steady, you know, grow at that 15% clip, kind of go up. Um, in 2017, we saw a spike last year because of the Lakers. Uh, the Lakers, once they decided, that, hey, we're going to field a really good team and try to win this thing and had some great quality young picks, we rode that wave. And that was a, a crescendo that we had last year. but. Uh, we're, we're ahead probably, you know, 5% right now, 5 to 6% on, on pre-sale. So we expect to, you know, hopefully meet, if not exceed what we did last year.